I am going to turn the stage over to the slightly stickier than he was a few moments ago, <laughs> Matt Alex. Let's hear from Matt Alex and Fearless Lab. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Ah, everybody, sorry. hello. Uh, welcome to the Fearless Lab. Uh, as Tim mentioned, we do have a matching grant of uh, $100 over the next hour. Your money goes twice as far if you want to donate now. And that does count towards us wrapping the lovely and talented Lauren Haven in bubble wrap and rolling her across the stage. Because as she pointed out backstage when, she, when we asked if she was cool with it, she said, that's all I've ever wanted. <laughs> so before Lauren dies alone, you might get to see that. <clears throat> Uh, for those of you who have never seen Fearless Lab before, whether you're here in person or you're watching online, Fearless Lab is Fearless's, Fearless's, yeah, Fearless's experimental comedy show. It runs uh, every month at, uh, at Honey in Northeast, uh, near Certix. Most of you can find it based on the liquor store. It's a weird thing our audience knows. Um, <clears throat> but second Tuesday of every month at Honey. And the rule of performing at Fearless Lab is when you show up with something to do, it's supposed to be funny. I don't care if it is funny, it may not end up being funny, but the goal is you're trying to be funny. So if you want to write a song, you want to do improv, you want to uh, do stand-up, and you can be a very well-versed comedian, you can be someone who's never been on stage before, I do not care. The barrier to entry is you have to ask me to perform. And I say yes to literally everyone. So all you have to do is make the choice to take a stab at getting in front of some strangers and trying to be funny. However, you want to do that. Because there's nothing more important than getting out and trying. Everyone in the world has a bunch of ideas about what they think should happen, or wouldn't it be good if, and shouldn't someone, and you know, I think it would be funny if. I don't give a shit about those people. The people I love are the people that get up on stage and do it. And Fearless Lab is one of those places you can. So, without further ado, let's move on into our first act, which I believe is the recently ass-whacking Megan Slauson. Yay. Oh, this is, okay, remember anyone who's ever been to lab? I don't know how to work a microphone, so this is gonna be, also there's things where I'd like you to participate back if you could. It's gonna be real obvious, so help a, help a sister out. Okay, thank you. Okay, also I'm not gonna look at you because I hate you all, so. While trying to come up with a piece to perform tonight, I realized something. I am not funny. Sure, I do funny things sometimes and have even written funny things for other people to say, other funnier people, but myself as a person, I am not funny. Which is too bad for all of you because I'm pretty sure I'm slated for five minutes. So enjoy. Um, I think the reason I'm not funny is pretty simple. I was told not to be. I mean, never directly, no one ever sat me down and forbade me to do it, but it, I wasn't grounded for telling knock-knock jokes like this one. This is the part I was talking about. Knock-knock. Yoda lady. Yoda lady. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, I never got in trouble for telling jokes, and I never got detention for drawing silly comics on my homework, which I did a lot. And I drew comics even into my 20s, and I created a character called Piku. And if you are blessed enough to see Piku, you should feel really privileged, is what I'm saying. Um, and it's not like comedy in the media was forbidden to me when I grew up. I grew up watching Saturday Night Live, and I read joke books all the time. It was just normal occurrences in my household. My grandparents got me a subscription to Mad Magazine, if you guys remember that. And I was probably like 9 or 10. So I love Foldens, is what I'm saying, I guess. Um, as I got older, my love and consumption of comedy grew, or maybe matured. Knock-knock jokes were no longer funny, but poop jokes remain hilarious. Um, all that consumption, I don't think, let me become a funny person, though. I mean, I really don't know what funny is. I can quote an alarming amount of IT crowd and Mitch Hedberg. <laughs> really, I should probably just be doing that for your amusement? Did you guys see that ludicrous display last night? No, no IT crowd. Anyways, from the IT crowd. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, anyway, my life has been full of funny things <laughs> and lately funny people. Nights like these are full of hilarious and talented people I consider friends. Funny people surround me like a big fuzzy blanket made of dick jokes, music, and wit so sharp it cuts. <laughs> Which is a horrible thing for a blanket. And despite or in spite, I never remember if it's despite or anyways, despite? We'll go with that. Um, even with all of that, all of these things, I'm just not a funny person. Remember? 
<laughs> Remember how I said I was told not to be funny and now you're all like, get to the point, lady. We want you to stop talking. Um, I told myself not to be funny. I told myself not to be funny for most of my life. I have been the force, the asshole stopping myself. Because being funny, being a funny person takes so much strength and honesty. It makes you vulnerable and it makes you, even if you have a warm and fuzzy blanket with some sharp points, it, you have to do it on your own. You have to want to be funny. You have to work on it and find the courage inside yourself to let that tiny George Carlin or Jimmy Durante or Joan Collins or Richard Pryor out. And maybe you work on it by reading not so funny essays in front of a room full of people at a marathon that exists to give people opportunities like this. Megan Slauson, hot damn. As I mentioned, Fearless Lab is open to anyone and everyone that wants to perform. I have a very public email address, which is my name, matt.alex, A-L-L-E-X, people screw that up a lot, at gmail.com. If you would like to perform, you send me an email with Fearless Lab in the subject. And the next time I have an opening that works for both your schedule and mine, you're in. Know that. Share it with your friends that also want to perform. Speaking of performers, how about another one? All right. Now, some people know our next performer from being on Awful Copter. Some people know him from being uh, the newest member of the Apropos of Nothing podcast. I know him as my sweet baboo. Aww. Not a joke. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, James Fairbairn. Thank you, my love. I was wondering what to talk about, actually. Like, I wrote all of this this morning. Uh, I had this thing put together about uh, like a TED talk. Uh, nope. All right. Um, I thought I'd save it for a more academic crowd and a more academic speaker. Um, I, I considered doing just eight minutes of hand farts while I looked meaningfully into the audience. That is still on the table. All right. I just want you to know. Okay. Instead, I'd like to talk to you about poop. Okay, good. I'm glad we've made a decision together. All right. So, uh, comedy for me began with impressing my sister. Okay? It did. Because she's three years older than I am, and right now that's a tenth of our lives, which is not a big deal. But when we were little, it was half of my life and a third of hers, and she had no time for this parent-stealing, wailing monster kid thing. Right. Um, that she couldn't dress up, which was her goal. Um, so th what happened was uh, I, I found a way into her heart, uh, and it happened, uh, okay, so here's the situation. If you, uh, if you trip on the top step and you just go like flying down it, there's that moment where you're like, okay, I'm gonna die. <laughs> it's all over, this is it, right? And it's usually about halfway down doing like an awkward Michael Flatley, like, <laughs> and then you land and or stumble into a wall or a door or something, right? Because that's how it goes. And then you just start laughing because you lived, right? <laughs> that's your privilege as the person who survived. So my sister walked toward the bathroom that I had just vacated, uh, in which I had just vacated, and <laughs> she stopped and I watched a look of horror wash over her face as she was buffeted back physically, <laughs> right? As if by a riot shield pushed back out of the bathroom and she looked at me like she was about to throw up, but what came out was laughter. <laughs> I found how to impress her. And so following that, I decided to start naming poop. Um, uh, things like thunder soup, liquid jet assisted takeoff broth with loud heavy wind, loud chowder, a series of vociferous farts interjected between streams of mixed content, thunder soup, but with chunks. <laughs> Probably my most favorite, upended pickle jar. <laughs> a loose collection of medium-sized solid masses propelled by or suspended in a tidal wave of colon tears. <laughs> the overfull wa water slide, also, is the name, okay. Um, there's uh, also cold clay out a fine screen door. <laughs> a whole day's sit-ups in a single turd. The war and peace of poops. <laughs> Kafka-esque. All right. Uh, as is the next one. Uh, toddler through a sausage grinder. 
a steaming steak popsicle, the meat shits. All right, so I w would start doing these things and it just cracked her up. She loved this and it made us friends. It like brought me into her heart even as it cast me out of her room. <laughs> so this is not limited to her either. It has passed to my nephew, uh, sorry, I didn't, that's unintentional. Um, it, but my nephew has also received the gift of poop humor and I remember when it happened. I was, okay, so who here has cats? Okay, have you ever looked up at your cat when it's on a top shelf next to something very valuable to you where it has been sitting poised and it goes, Oh, you're looking now. <laughs> I do that to my sister sometimes, fart-wise. Um, and it, it happened, I was in the kitchen, she was at the far end, and I opened up the fridge and I was like, oh, I've got one brewing. And she knows that glint in my eye <laughs> means the storm. And uh, so I closed the fridge door and she goes, no. Just like leg up, full on, just uh, and uh, she looked more horrified than usual. So I was like, I stopped, like, <laughs> and she said, the baby, <laughs> and I was like, what, what are you talking? And then. Like one and a half, maybe two years old, my nephew was standing behind me like a ride photo from the Haunted Mansion. And then he started to applaud. And my sister creased in the middle and was done. And I, I just attribute that to both the inherent humor of poops and also that her baby had survived and it was a stairs moment for both of them. Uh, tragedy brings us all together. Uh, so I knew that this had been instilled in him when in a room full of adults at a holiday party, he came cruising in at top baby speed parkoured himself up on top of one of the couch arms, right? Raised his hands victoriously over his head and said, it's time for magic! And then <laughs> farted loudly and greasily <laughs> in front of a room of now destroyed adults. <laughs> Leapt like a superhero from his perch and disappeared into the night. And there was a moment when everyone went, look, eye contact, confirm. You saw that too. Lost it. It is so hard to punish someone when you can't stand up because you're crying from laughing. My nephew is now 13, he's almost 14. He's way too cool to do anything that awesome anymore. And I'm looking forward to when he gets past it. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Which, uh, the last time I did Die Laughing Lab, I talked about Minnesotans in space and how it's a great idea, and it is. Uh, and, and the thing is, right now we can save Elon Musk so much money as Minnesotans. All he has to do is ask us three times. <laughs> he doesn't have to pay us. He's, uh, yeah, Mr. Johansson? Yeah. Uh, we're gonna put you on a rocket. Ah, uh, gosh, I'm really flattered, but I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Well, uh, we'd really like to fire you into space. Uh, oh, you know, I'm honored, but um, tell you what, just put me at the bottom of the list, and if nobody else, just come back, just come back to me, we'll work something, maybe, okay? I got, I got to plastic the windows and put the snow tires on, all right? So just 
I got a lot on my, on my plate right now. Mr. Jansen, we'd like to fire you into space. Look, I have now told you twice, and I don't know what it's going to take for me to get there by 8 in the morning, <laughs> but I will get my oil changed tonight and be <laughs> down there. Right, and so that's it. That's it's all, all you have to do. But um, they have to be really cautious about getting uh, boys like my nephew into space because they're too cool. They're going to find these find kids without a suit in the airlock, like, and they're like, no, don't do it. And they'll be like, I'm just going out for a second. <laughs> I left some beer in the pod to cool. I'm sure it's good now. I'll just be, I'll be right back in. Don't do it. Look for the older guys. They've got plenty to live for. So me personally, I, what broke me of the habit was a fart story. I was in, and this is my capper here. I was in an elevator at the courthouse and I'm I, in my suit and everything, and I, I like to think I clean up pretty, especially like at that age, I was a sharp looking dude, I think. And I felt really cool too, which is dangerous. Don't ever do that. Um, I felt super cool, and that has been trained out of me. Um, in walks a bike messenger into the elevator as I'm headed up to the 22nd floor. Uh, and he gets in on like the third, and rips one of the loudest farts. I think there was haze in the lights of the elevator. I think the walls shook slightly, and it was rank. It was terrifying. And then he got out on the next floor. That was the only elevator that went up to the 22nd floor, and a beautiful woman got in on the next floor. And what the fuck are you going to say? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> James Fairbairn! <laughs> Hot damn. Uh, we've got a lot to do. Uh, we're going to set up for a slightly different type of act for our third one here. So thank you to our... Uh, by the way, give it up for tech and stage hands and all that. Um, I know uh, those of us that are on the microphone side often make them the butt of our jokes when they're doing their actual job, which is making us look good. Uh, so, j real quick, we would look like shit without them. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, our next performer, who is out here probably terrified. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Everything so far checks out. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, Kayla Sodebeer. Oh, hey. Actually, it's better. Yeah. Ladies. Okay. Hi. How's everybody doing? So, um, fun thing. Last year on this stage during lab um, is the first time I ever, ever tried stand up. And uh, so we've come, we've come full circle uh, now. I've found that I tend to talk about the same kind of stuff on stage. It's kind of like a personal diary gone public for me. Um, I sing songs about, you know, working in retail, having crushes on women, and mental health. So basically the life of your typical music college graduate. Um, I did have a friend accuse me of using stand-up as Tinder. Um, I mean, to be fair, after I played... Um, my like gay song last year <laughs> as basically an introduction to a lot of people who are now close friends. Um, more people definitely like thought I was a lesbian, go figure. Um, but since we're here, hey ladies. <laughs> and uh, just so we're not confused, hey everybody else too. <laughs> I like everyone. <laughs> um, but more than people, um, I love cats. Um, which is, you know, if you get bored during the set, um, you can play a nifty game I thought of, which is just count all the ways in which Kayla sounds like a stereotypical lesbian. Um, but so I've been looking at getting a, getting a cat because I'm moving soon and we'll finally be able to have cats in the house, right? So um, I've discovered that the cat rescue or cat adoption websites are basically Tinder, um, except for 
swiping uh, left all the time. Instead, you swipe right on all of the pictures. <laughs> Give me all the cats. Um, Cats are a wonderful way to distract from your life as a weird OCD query working in retail and the various mental breakdowns that just come with the fact that nothing is real, consciousness is an illusion, and we're all just a bunch of pixels. Um, at least that's what I gathered from my college experience, but um, I get the sense that in the audience you either disagree or weren't really ready for that uh, in a comedy show, which is fine and why I see a therapist. Speaking of which, my first song is called Song for My Therapist. Um, I made it for a good reason. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, it can sometimes take a while to find a therapist that you work well with, which is exhausting when your energy levels are already so low from whatever mental illness has struck that day. Um, side note, any of my fellow crazy cats ever try to self-diagnose? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> I knew that I fit, uh, thank you. I knew that I fit anxiety, depression, and an obsessive compulsive disorder, but the more that I read on the internet, the more I also related to BPD, PTSD, bipolar, attention deficit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I collect mental disorders like some people collect rocks or beanie babies. Um, before I knew it, I also decided I had hypothyroidism, fibromyalgia, cancer. You know, turns out I only have a few of those, so. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, in the search to find a good therapist, you end up sort of telling your story over and over again. Right, so when I was 14, my parents got divorced and my grandma died at the same time. And then when my boyfriend broke up with me after that, I really started noticing something was wrong. And after a while, it gets really annoying. So I, I figured I would do us all a favor and just find a more convenient way to go about this process, which is what led to the following song. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Song for my therapist. Can't see with my hat. I thought I'd make it easier on you. See, I've already been through quite a few therapists now my intention here is not to scare you rather just to prepare you for the big shit show you're in for my empathy wants me to be Weary of your time, but my patience to find someone decent is running on a finer line. So for time's sake, <clears throat> I've got what seems like a lovely bit of OCD mixed with depression and anxiety. Throw in a little bit of chronic pain abandonment and hey, you got me. I struggle with depersonalization, chronic pain abandonment issues, healthy dose of proper daddy issues. I don't need to get the tissues. Used to relive in my past. Done it 20 fucking times in the last few dimly lit therapy rooms. Other counselors weren't quite sure what to do. But I don't mean to put it all on you. You're just a person and that's why I've written this song for you. How much time do we have? You do take Aetna insurance, right? <laughs> I know it's your job to sit here and listen to me whine. But regardless, I know it's a lot in a small amount of time. Oh, my family. Yeah, they're all proper divorcees. Hell, half of them don't know their daddies. My mom's side is full of the gunslinging, calberting, conservative type. And on my dad's side, and on my dad's side, they all pretend they're good Lutherans. But we all know what the truth is. Happy for money and to just go and cheat on their wives. And my first boyfriend. <laughs> Spread a great rumor about me Told the whole school I'm self-harming That another ex tried to coerce me to fuck him It worked, then he cheated Guess my grandma was right when she spent half my childhood Convincing me men were just evil Funny to think now I'm gay Guess that backfired for her and my family <laughs> I say all this out loud and I know 
said it sounds pretty bad, but I mean, in the very least it resulted in songs that aren't half bad, right? <laughs> I've no money because I went to college to learn about music, no less. And my teachers just told me complaining about health would not get me hired. And then they threatened to ruin my career if I told folks the shit that they'd say in their classrooms. And one of them found my best friend, yes, a student, on dating websites. Then my school died before we could get degree papers. McNally Smith, all of that work for more labor. We work retail to pay for our degrees to a school that no longer exists. I hope that all this was helpful and not a waste of both our times, maybe. I'll see you next week for the reprise. Thanks. Um, in case you were wondering, um, I did actually play that song for my therapist. Uh, she thought it was great, so I figured I'd try it here. Um, my favorite thing about comedy is making dismal shit sound happy, um, also because it allows me to talk about the things that I'm interested in, like mental health, uh, weird sexual encounters, uh, homosexuality, and death. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, I'm the only one I know who enjoys just having a cheeky conversation about death on the cash. Like, don't any of you ever think about like who will go through your phone and your laptop after you die? Because like, I assume my parents would do that. Um, what a <laughs> what a really tragic way to find out your kid's gay, right? No chance of redemption for this kid, I guess. Probably going to hell. Um, but I mean, there are other non-favorable ways to find out your kid is gay, like on a live streaming comedy show on the internet. <laughs> Lesser of two evils? Uh, how am I doing on time? <laughs> cool. Speaking of gay shit, um, I was um, having sex with a man the other day. Wait, it gets gay. Like, I mean, I do. He doesn't, which is usually a deal breaker for me. Um, but, you know, it, in this case, it, it's not just that I like women. It's that I, you know, I like men liking men. Because uh, we can relate to each other. Uh, anyway, this guy's straight, but not for my lack of trying. Um, I'm always, I'm always just like, have you ever just like thought about it, maybe even a little? What about just like a little bit of gay sex? No. All right. Well, anyways, we were boning, um, and I stop, look him straight in the eye, um, <laughs> and just dead ass say, "No, I think I'm full gay." Um, thank God he's understanding and has a sense of humor. Because, um, I mean, look, this was, this was after many attempts to uh, make me like dick, um, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Um, it's not, you know, like, I like the person attached to it, just not the accoutrement, you know? Like, <laughs> anyway, I'd met this guy who is now my partner at my last job, which was, of course, retail. Um, and uh, we were coworkers who enjoyed bitching about our terrible customers, uh, and he actually came up with the title to this song. It's called Retail in Gay Major. <laughs> Driving me nuts. All right. All right. Where'd he go? I see you walking and looking smug in your suit and tie. You think you're hot because you're a pasty skin, straight white guy. Hitting up my register, you think you own the place. I'd love to smack you in your stupid corporate douchebag face. Thank you. Ringing up your order, I ask how your day has been. I'm not asking for your dick, you're making this by girl a lesbian. Look, I'm being paid to take your order, ring you up. My smiling at you does not mean that I am trying to fuck. Oh, if I was not afraid of getting fired. I'm so fucking tired and hung over, so please don't come again. 
Hey, motherfucker, did you know that I'm a human too? Two tickets is not a response to my nice how are you? Did you suburb assholes ever work when you were young? Quit bitching at me just because you were not born well hung. <laughs> oh, if I was not afraid of getting fired, I'd tell you to eat a dick. John. I'm so fucking tired and hung over, so please don't come again. Fuck you. Thank you. For years, I've said comedy is cheaper than therapy. <clears throat> we have more. How's that sound? <clears throat> so uh, there are a lot of different ways to present your comedy. Some of them, can I, where's Nancy? Is she back there? Where, you're right there? OK. Uh, there's an ongoing joke, because Nancy actually does Fearless Lab fairly regularly, and is one of my favorite performers. And she has a difficult to pronounce last name. Oh, I'm watching your time dwindle, Nancy. <laughs> but uh, while we were standing at the box office and I was making the usual joke of like, Nancy, and it's pronounced Smith, right? And uh, I, I forget, was it Don? Who's working the box office? Dana, Dana, Dana sorry. Uh, Dana, who also actually signed up for lab literally about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Fuck yes, thank you. Um, I've had multiple people sign up to want to do lab over the course of this weekend. That's awesome. Uh, so I was like, it's pronounced Smith, right? And uh, Dana was, no, it's Smythe. <laughs> <laughs> to which uh, Megan, who performed at the top of the show, said, it's pronounced Moose. <laughs> Nancy Moose. It's just not that hard. That's what she said. <laughs> Wait, did I just go blue for the first time ever? That's weird. Okay, so let's see. Um, yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm super excited. I'm embarrassed to follow such a great act, but I'm gonna try. So, but here's the thing. Before I get started, you guys, the most exciting thing has happened. Okay, I've been doing stand-up off and on since 1981. Um, and by 81, I mean I did it for three years, then I took 30 years off. Because, you know, I have shit to do. So anyway, but I'm back. I've been back since 2011 or so, whatever. Anyway, but the exciting thing is, is I have my first sponsor. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. The sponsor happens to be Gallup, you know, the guys who do the polls, you know? No, they do the Gallup polls? Okay, so here's the thing. And I was hoping you guys don't mind, but Gallup wants me to conduct my first poll right now. Is that all right? It'll just take a few minutes. Okay, thank you. Oh. Okay, so let me read what Gallup sent to me, what they want me to accomplish right now, okay, so you guys understand. The goal of this particular poll is to gauge people's feelings on noise pollution. Your participation is voluntary and or mandatory, choose one. Uh, sorry. 
By definition, noise pollution occurs when there is either excessive amount of noise or an unpleasant sound that causes a temporary disruption. Causes of noise pollution include poor urban planning, social events, and transportation. You're part of the problem. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm just reading what they sent me. I don't know. Okay, so first off, I'm supposed to get some demographics out of the way, all right? So if you'll indulge me. Um, question 1A, if you're a male or, or identify as male, or if you're a female or identify as female, please reply by applause. I feel like that should have been a couple questions. Oh, whatever. Question 1B. If your age is between 0 and 30, please applause. applaud. Thank you. If your age is between 20 and 45, please clap. And if your age is between 30, 36 and 62, please clap. Wait, I think these numbers are off. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. We'll get to the heart of the matter. Okay, so now I'm supposed to assess how many of there you are, and of course I can't see you, so I have an idea, but you have to listen carefully so I can figure out how, how many there are. And this is going to be really challenging for the people online, so just clap really loud, okay? <laughs> uh, okay, okay, so I'm going to count. Shut up, I'm trying to do something. God, he always does this. It's the name, disruptions. Okay, so I'm going to count all of you, but this is going to be hard, but just, just start clapping. No, 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 God, I tried, no, it's not working. I have an idea though, okay, follow carefully. I want, on the count of three, I want everyone to applaud just the once, and I'm going to try it that way. On one, two, three. There's someone with really big hands and someone with really small hands. So are there two of you? <laughs> I, I seriously, I can't see it. It's just I, like see an Ewok out there. I see some freaking lights. It's so weird. <laughs> okay. Obviously that didn't work. So let me try it one other way. And I learned this in improv. So and I know of you guys. A lot of you guys have this background. So maybe this will work. Just someone start clapping, but just the once, and then just. Somebody else start clapping next, just the once, and I'm going to try to count it that way. Just somebody start. Okay, okay, okay. You can't clap twice. I heard that. I'm good with the ears. Whatever. You know, I'm getting paid either way, so do I give a shit? I don't. Fine. Now that the demographics are out of the way, I'm going to move on to question 37. Mm, okay. Weird. Okay, by applause, who likes, who here likes applause? Wow, this is a weird poll. Okay, <laughs> question 38. By applause, do you prefer quiet applause or noisy applause? I hope you're happy. <laughs> whatever, whatever. I got, I got nowhere to be. Question 39. By applause, who here prefers complete silence to noisy applause? <laughs> Seriously, Matt. Can you take it down? I'm trying to listen. <laughs> All right, what? Well, cut. Thanks for the distraction. I don't even know what I was measuring. <sighs> Let's see, that was probably 40% of you who didn't clap, 60% who clapped loudly. Carry the seven. Oh, shit. I'm writing this is bullshit. <laughs> Whatever. Fine. When you clapped, are you saying you meant you like silence or applause? I don't even know. Well, you're going to have to applaud if you're answering my question. <laughs> wow. All right, I'll tell you what, it's fine, it's fine. I'm just gonna make a call, I'm gonna call the company, I'm sure it'll be fine, all right? Actually, um, we, now what? We don't actually have enough time for you to call the company. 
Love it. I mean, ah. see ya. No, it was ah. Nancy Majestad. For once. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. Uh, hey, folks. We got. I see what you did there. We got a little bit of time left. So, what if we filled it with comedy? Okay, I was kind of. Or. Oh, or or uh, Josh Knight can come out and do some songs. What do you feel like? That answers the question in no way, shape, or form. So here's Josh Knight. <laughs> really? I'm wearing my fanciest fancy shirt. But, uh, I never feel like I'm ready for battle, like comedy battle, unless I have my skull shirt on. So, uh, you know, we got skulls. We got, can you hear that guitar? I'm sorry. So I am a, like a songwriter, a little bit of a comedian, and a really shitty guitar player. So every year when I come and do our, whenever I do a Fearless Lab, just to make sure I'm keeping myself honest, I try to do something that I haven't done before. And like a couple years ago, that was power chords. Like, <laughs> that's how shitty of a guitar player I am. Uh, and this time it's this. So I'm gonna fuck that up a lot. But Fearless. <laughs> Okay, this is a song about, well, I don't want to give it away. So it's a song. Well, I'm not the kind to make demands, but this thing is out of my hands. You got no choice, you must do as I say. If ever you respected me, if I have any authority, we're gonna have to do this thing my way. Cause I feel we're getting close. To the point of a no return You feel it head to toes But there's a lesson that you still have got to learn If you're gonna come, come quietly Promise me that you won't say a word If you're gonna come, come quietly Your screams and cries and moans should not be heard Got busted at my parents' house Cause I was quiet as a mouse But you screamed like a teenage horror queen Got busted at my parents too A little bit me, but mostly you And you, you know I like it when you get obscene <laughs> Fucking four chords in this song And I picked the wrong one But my daughter's sleeping now Right there at the foot of the bed this already seems wrong somehow <laughs> If she wakes up, she'll get messed up in the head So if you're gonna come, come quietly Bite your arm or squeeze a pillow tight If you're gonna come, honey, please come quietly We really need this kid to sleep tonight when the bed began to creak and crake, I was so afraid that she'd awake, but she's still sitting, sucking on her thumb. But now your thighs are starting to quiver, and I can see your body shiver, and now you're flowing like a river, and you know your man can deliver, and you're gonna, and you're gonna, and you're gonna, 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 come! Not so quietly. You screamed out when you went over the brink Honey, when you come, it ain't quietly And Lord knows what the neighbors are gonna think But baby girl, so quietly Somehow hasn't opened up her eyes So I exhale so quietly and that's when she wakes up and starts to cry. <laughs> All right, honey, let's, let me get my underwear on and I'll change her. Well, of course I gotta put my underwear on first. Cause it's fucking weird otherwise. <laughs> Thank you, that song was called Come Quietly, but I didn't want to tell you that until it was over. 
No. How are we doing? Keep going? Keep going. Keep going. All two and a half songs. Okay, because I want to put the half song in the middle. So sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you go start writing a song and you get like 45 seconds of song and it's great. And then you try to write the rest of the song and everything you try to do with that song is bullshit. So I've, I've realized that this is, this is all the song that it's going to be and that's okay. So uh, it doesn't even have a name. It's a, it's a, I like to think of it as a song shot. You know, it's not like a full cocktail. It's just for somebody, busy people on the go, song shots. Right? If you buy single ply for a shared office bathroom, I hope your motherfucking house burns to the ground. Oh, may your sons, your daughters, your pets, your husbands and wives escape the conflagration with their lives. But if you buy single ply for a shared office bathroom, I hope your motherfucking house burns to the ground all the way down. <clears throat> all right, got one more for, the, for this last one. Now that I've gotten the scary shit out of the way, I feel like I can relax and kind of do something that I'm used to and that I might be good at. And the song only has four chords and they're all in the same order. So we'll see how badly I can fuck it up. <clears throat> This is called The Hair Song. It's about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> when I was young, I took my hair for granted. It grew strong and straight at the top of my head. So I dye it black any time I felt emo. And when I felt saucy, I dye it all red. Or I'd let it grow long till it swung around my chin. It would blow in the wind. It was thoroughly great, but then one day I looked in the mirror and I saw the light gleam off the top of my page. Now the hair on my chest grows like the best and the hair on my ass is thick as wild grass and the hair on my balls is regal and tall but the hair on my head never grows at all. And you call me bald but I got plenty of hair Oh, oh. So I got fairy forests inside of both ears, and I trim them each week. But you can't really tell that my nose hair grows till it clogs up my nostrils, and the hair in my armpits is wiry and smells. And hold on just a second. <clears throat> Minor point of order here. Um, look, I'm a modern dude. I don't care if you're, you're male or female or non binary or French, but. <laughs> Armpit hair is really gross. So please, everyone, can we just all agree as a society to shave it off? Sorry, a little editorial. What, what the fuck was I? Oh, yeah, man. I got hair on my back from shoulders to crack, and the hair near my junk grows in spiraling chunks, and the hair on my balls is a regal and tall, but the hair on my head never grows at all. I got hair on my toes like a hobbit, but gross. Got hair on my palms, I guess you were right. Mom, and the hair on my balls is regal and tall, but the hair on my head doesn't grow at all. And you call me bald, which is a pretty fair comp. I mean, I've even got a bald spot on my fucking beard now. Right? Jesus. But perhaps I'm the winner to look like Yul Brynner. And you know, it can't be that hard to be like Jean-Luc Picard. You see, I got a predilection for Bruce in Pulp Fiction. And so it's with ease I'll emulate Vin Diesel and get me some action like Samuel L. Jackson, some real hoochie-coochie like my man Stanley Tucci or Louis C.K. or oh, ooh. So this is kind of an old song. <laughs> Let me just say that I'm in no way endorsing his gross and idiotic and disgusting behavior. I'm just saying that he is bald and he is successful. Or Louis C.K., or Cool J, or even Sean Connery. Back in the day, I could keep 
all the ladies enthralled and it's a damn good thing I look so sexy ball thank you very much Joshua night everybody so that has been uh, Fearless Lab at Die Laughing. Uh, I hope it gave you an idea of the act. The, you, you know what? I, I literally did not know what any of these people were going to do before they got on stage. That was up to them. That is how Fearless Lab works. If you want to bring comedy to a stage, and you want that stage to be honey the second Tuesday of every month, you can email me, and it happens. I don't ask you what you're going to do. I don't care what you're going to do. The only requirement is try to be funny. So, thank you, all of you, who have tried to be funny at Fearless Lab. I'll point out most of you have succeeded, and many of you now do half-hour sets here <laughs> because you tried some stupid shit at Fearless Lab. That is not on me. I am not humble bragging, as we joked about in AON. Uh, I am merely a facilitator. I'm the guy that happens to be emceeing. The show is you. And please, it's okay, I, cried. I know, <laughs> I saw it. Please remember. You're not much of a man. Oh, oh God, that's not even <laughs> relative, <laughs> especially that. Um, <clears throat> everyone should realize you have the power to do this. There's nothing about me that's special. I simply try, and you can too. If you'd like a chance, I'll give it to you. Thank you. All right, that was Matt Alex in Fearless Lab.